I'm honestly not sure why more miners aren't utilizing this free tool. I haven't seen really much of content as far as the crypto mining community covering this particular tool. And again, it's free and that anyone can download to manage their crypto mining hardware locally. Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I wanna talk about a tool that I use in my day-to-day full-time job that I'm also using to manage my hardware here locally. Now you can set it up for remote monitoring and management of a, like a local farm or a farm in a remote location, but we're just gonna be focusing on your local hardware if you wanted to. And the program is obviously called Putty. We can SSH into any of our machines because Hive OS allows us to do so. I mean, when you run the remote access command for Hive shell start or shell in the box, or even VNC, you're remoting into the machine locally through Hive. Now, Hive allows you, uh, whether you, you know, uh, afar or abroad or whatever, you can remote into your machine, you can log in, you can manage it, you can update drivers, update the miner, whatever it might be. Uh, but, you know, switching between the tabs can be something that anybody can do. However, I personally like to use this tool, and it's Putty. To set it up is very simple, right? We're definitely going to need the IP for the miner in question for example this miner is called xsf2 and it has an ip of 192.168.50.140 so on putty here if we go ahead and open up brand new it, it will give you the default port of 2222 which you can change to whatever you want but we just need to type in that ip address so 192.168.50.140 i believe was the actual ip leave the port number the same. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We're gonna give it the name of the rig in question, and then we're gonna click save. That adds it to putty right here. But when you open it, you need the trusted certificate. So you're gonna select it and then click open. You're gonna hit accept, right? Cause it's trying to sign a certificate. And then we need to put in our user. Now by default, because every mining operating system is gonna be a little bit different. By default uh, for Hive OS, the user is gonna be user. And then the password is going to be whatever you set. And I do recommend changing it and not leaving it the stock password that comes in high. But you see, you get the exact same dashboard that you would if you were to use shell in the box or, um, you know, the high shell start command. Either one will load up pretty much the exact same thing. But with putty, if I wasn't on any of the browsers or if my browser was all containing work elements and nothing to do with mining whatsoever... I can simply use putty to manage it. For example, here we are in XSF2. When I hit minor, I can see here what's going on. And if I, you know, use the middle mouse on, you know, the rolling wheel on my mouse and I, I just click on it, I open up a new session. And now we're going to add our secondary machine, XSF3, which is uh, ending in 105. So almost the same thing, but a little bit different. So we're going to load that just to make it a little bit easier and then save it as a different name. Hit save. And now we got a bunch of different machines in here. And I can easily load this. So I'm going to load up XSF3 right now. Hit open and accept. And here is a new window. Again, same thing. The default username for Hive is user. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other operating systems here in a second. You put in the password that you configured for your machine, which you can change inside Hive settings. And now I can see both of these guys back to back, no problem. If I wanted to go a little bit deeper, I could do so by opening up another putty window. And just like tabs in a browser, yes, you can just use it easily in a browser. I do like doing it this way rather than uh, through the browser because then I can use or I can manage all of this um, right here on my desktop. I got multiple screens. I can have my work over here and I can have my mining rigs over here. And I could be monitoring what's going on. I can monitor the thermals. I can monitor the hash rate. I can monitor a number of different things. So I got the exact same thing we would see in Hive, but instead via uh, SSH through Putty. And there's different SSH programs out there that you can check out if you like. Um, you can SSH into your simple mining OS rig. Uh, the default username, I believe, is uh, Miner. Uh, but here's the configuration right here. Enter your username, Miner dash password whatever the password is your password would be your email account or your account mail uh but you will enter it in the next step which is when you actually load up and this is using 
uh, I believe, basic SSH, right? So you're putting the user at and the IP, whereas me, I'm just putting in the IP, going in, and then typing in the actual user I want to log in with and then the password. Uh, Rave OS, same thing. The default user is root, and then the password by default is admin. However, for any of these guys, do not leave it the default password. Always change it. If you want to identify your IP and you're not logging into Hive for some reason to see your machine, um, maybe you just added it and you don't know what the IP is. I, I guess that works. Um, you can use your router to do so, or you can use uh, Angry IP Scanner, which I love Angry IP Scanner. I use it all the time. Sometimes I use it and my router to confirm a device, especially if a new device has connected to the network. But rather than using the Hive OS uh, shell in a box, which is just as easy, I personally like to use Putty. It's a tool that I like to use. Not sure why other people aren't using it, uh, but it just allows me to have multiple windows open. And I don't even need the browser open. Matter of fact, we can just close the browser out right now. Boom. I'm sitting here. Maybe I'm watching a video, playing a game on my main screen. And then I, over here, I got my rigs and everything. And the beautiful thing, too, is with Chrome turned off and you don't have Chrome enabled to use a lot of resources in the background because Chrome does eat up a lot of resources. Uh, let's see here. Memory. The highest utilization program now is OBS. But when we open up Chrome and we start having, you know, multiple tabs opening up on our machine, it starts to eat into our system resources. Look at that. It's already starting to climb up, eating more memory, eating more CPU. Uh, my system can handle it, no problem. But if you're a system with less cores, less memory, uh, it can be memory intensive. So instead of having Chrome opened up with all these different tabs, you know, because you got to have Hive and then the shell in the box and then the other uh, pro, uh, minor and then the shell in the box and the other minor. It just builds up and eats up resources instead. Boom. I got my putty. I got my Dragon Ball Z on one side of my screen. I got my games on the other. And it makes life a little bit easier. So I'm not sure if you're using it. If you are, please let me know down in the comments below. But I just wanted to share that quick tip with you and I hope it helps you out. But do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And don't forget, we got some merch. Serpent X merch on Crypty.com. Go check them out. Link is in the description. You have a wonderful day. Take care. Catch you next one.